Hey guys, Will here. So I heard it said recently that a lot of sim racing manufacturers create problems and not many of them create solutions. So today we're gonna to be taking a look at Sim Racing Machines, which is definitely a company that provides a lot of solutions to common sim racing problems. Now today's video is gonna be a little bit different from what you might be used to here at Boosted Media. Rather than diving into one particular product in a lot of detail in a more kind of review style video, this is gonna be more of a showcase, kind of giving you a good idea of all the various different things that sim racing machines offer and how some of those products might be able to help you. So we're not affiliated with them in any way. We don't even have affiliate links for sim racing machines. Simon, the guy that runs the company, is just a really great guy who's found a way to earn a little bit of money from his passion, which is basically just helping people. So I thought that that was worthwhile making a video just to share that with you guys. And hopefully you might find a solution or two for some of the problems that you might be having. So let's dive in now and take a look at sim racing machines. So let's start off today by thanking the sponsor of today's video, which is Micro Center. So if you're in the US, you're probably already familiar with Micro Center as a fantastic place to source all sorts of electronic stuff from PCs through to TVs, gadgets, all kinds of bits and pieces. What you might not know though, is that they also sell an increasing range of sim racing products. Now they just added a new sim racing rig configurator to their website as well, which is a really powerful tool. But the thing that I'm most excited about is that finally you guys have a way to get eyes on and in some cases even hands on with a lot of the sim racing products that we cover here at Boosted Media before you actually buy them. So at the moment they've got a couple of special deals going on for the fall season. So you can definitely check that out via the links down in the description below. They've also got a new center opening in Charlotte in just a couple of months time and then two new stores opening up after that pretty soon as well. So check them out via the links down in the description below or visit your local micro center today. So back to sim racing machines and I thought the best way to start this out would be to give you a little bit of background on the company and how they operate. So as I mentioned I've been chatting to Simon for quite some time now, gotten to know him pretty well and he just comes across as a really passionate, really intelligent and you know just a, a genuine person that wants to help people which I think is really important. So when you're dealing with sim racing machines, you are going to be dealing with Simon directly. He does operate, uh, I believe, on his own. Maybe he has a couple of people that are helping him, but primarily he's operating on his own at least. And uh, look, he's just, as I said before, a passionate guy that uh, loves helping people, loves making stuff like this, obviously has some very, very refined skills in making products like this as well. And basically he just looks for problems and comes up with solutions and then sells those solutions to you guys, which I think is really awesome. So if you jump on their website, simracingmachines.com, there's an about page, which takes you through a lot more detail on all of this. But yeah, look, in my experience, at least very, very easy to deal with. And uh, yeah, all the products definitely seem to, you know, carry through that, uh, that theme as well. As you'll see in today's video, the build quality and all of this stuff is absolutely amazing. So there's an immense variety of different products. We certainly don't have every single product here on the table in front of us today, but I will I basically chose a selection of things which I think represents what they sell pretty well. But again, jump on their website to get an idea of everything that they have available. So there's a couple of different themes when it comes to products that they sell. They sell passive devices like these adapter shims and bits and pieces that allow you to adapt between various different wheelbases and wheels. So this, for example, is a slim mount that allows you to bolt a wheel with a 70 millimeter stud pattern directly to a SimiQ base with minimal, uh, with minimal spacing there. So you're not having to move the wheel a whole lot closer to you. There's adapters here for adapting uh, NRG style quick releases for Moza and Sim Magic wheels, for example, through to a 70 millimeter stud pattern. Another similar adapter here as well. All kinds of bits and pieces like that. They've got a 70 millimeter PCD spacer here as well if you need something like that. Uh, even a VRS hub, which I thought was really cool as well. So you've got a piece here that bolts to the stem on your motor and then this part goes over the top of it, gives you a really nice clean finish. And we might dive into some of these products in a little bit more individual detail detail in future videos if there's enough interest, if you guys have enough questions down below. So if you do have any questions, definitely let us know. But then you get into the more, what I think is more interesting stuff, which is their electronics. Now, they offer a lot of replacement parts for common uh, bits and pieces too. So for example, if you have a snapped pin on your Fanatec wheel, you can purchase a replacement pin assembly directly from them. And again, all very nice, high quality stuff shipped in uh, recyclable packaging as well, other than just a little cloth bag 
which they include too. But you can see really nicely presented throughout. So all that stuff is extremely useful. I'm not gonna spend the time now to go through pricing because we'll be here for hours if we do that, but you can jump on their website and see the pricing for yourself. I personally think that it's pretty reasonable for the quality of materials that you're getting. If you were to buy something like that for a, uh, for a real life race car, which would essentially be the same build quality, it's all CNC machined and you know beautifully anodized and finished, you know, you'd probably be looking at you know at least you know half the price again, if not twice the price. So I think all of his stuff is pretty reasonably priced. But then we get into the stuff that I find most interesting, which is their emulators and electrical adapters. So for example, Simon teamed up with Peter from Pineapple Grips, whose grips for Fanatic wheels were reviewed not all that long ago here on the channel, uh, and they came up with a solution to actually mount a uh, Acertec wheel to any wheelbase that you want. So as you guys know uh, from our review videos, Acertec have their own proprietary quick release. It does have a pin assembly here which connects through to the wheelbase uh, as a standard USB protocol. So what that means is if you remove that adapter and then uh, bolt on one of their adapters, you can actually adapt an Acertec wheel to work with any wheelbase that you want and connect directly via USB, which is really cool. Now there are installation instructions for all of these things on their website too. So I'm not gonna spend a lot of time today going through installation. We will show you how to install a couple of these products a little bit later on when we get into the Fanatic stuff though, because I think that's what most people are gonna be the most interested in. So let's dive into that now. So we've got a selection of a couple of their Fanatic products here, which I'm gonna take you through. There is also one thing I wanna call out here, a little adapter that they've just made now, an emulator, which you literally, looks like a, it looks like a baby's dummy in fact. And what you do is you slip it into the uh, pin assembly on the uh, on the base side of the quick release. And uh, as a lot of you guys would know, uh, with Fnatic wheelbases, they actually need to have a Fnatic wheel connected to them to enable force feedback. So unlike uh, every other brand that I'm aware of at least, uh, you can't operate the force feedback on a Fnatic base unless you have a Fnatic wheel connected or at least a Fnatic hub of some description. So say a podium hub, a universal hub or such like. Now those are of course quite expensive to purchase and uh, you know it can sometimes be an unexpected cost. Some people will buy a base and then buy their own third party wheel, buy some sort of a quick release and simply just not realize that the force feedback isn't gonna work without having a Fnatic branded adapter between the wheel and the uh, and the actual base. So that is what we have solutions for here. Now one thing to just note here is that these emulator products for Fnatic are only tested for PC. So they're not guaranteed to work with console at all. They are sold as PC only products. So there's a couple of different solutions. I already mentioned the little dummy insert, which is one really simple way that also works with QR2 as well. What we have here is a replacement stem for a DD1 and DD2. Now if you saw our QR2 review video recently, you would have seen how these guys get installed. There's basically two plugs inside the base. And what you do is you replace the QR1 stem with this guy. And what it does is it gives you a 70 millimeter mounting pattern here, which you can mount your own quick release or bolt a wheel directly to. And the electronics inside here are basically an emulator. So what that does is it tricks the wheelbase into thinking that there's a Fnatic wheel connected. That therefore enables force feedback and you are good to go without the need to fork out for a uh, Fnatic hub, which is really cool. So obviously then whatever wheel you would connect would either connect your PC via Bluetooth wirelessly or have its own USB connection. So you are gonna be tethered in some sense there, but uh, you know, really cool way to work around that issue of not having force feedback if you're using a third party wheel. So this guy takes the approach of actually converting the DD1 or DD2 base across so you can use it with any wheel directly. If you don't want to convert your base because you still want to be able to use a selection of Fnatic wheels and bolt them directly on without having to stuff around with adapters and things, then you also have the option for something like this. Now you can choose whether you want to have a simplified quick release like what you see here, a standard Club Sport QR1 or even a QR2 uh, uh, whether you want the pro, the standard or the light version, all five of those solutions will bolt directly onto this. I'll open this up and show you how that works in just a minute. And essentially what this is doing is exactly the same thing, but from the other side. So you mount your wheel onto the base as per normal, and uh, then it's got an emulator inside of exactly the same as this, which makes the base think that there's a wheel connected. You then have a 70 millimeter or 50 millimeter stud pattern that you can bolt whatever quick release or wheel directly to, and that gets you up and running the other way from the way this would work. So whereas this guy was a solution specifically for the DD1 and DD2, this guy will work with any of the current range of Fnatic wheelbases. So we've got two solutions there for connecting any third party wheel you want to your Fnatic wheelbase. What if you wanna go the other way and use a Fnatic wheel on some other brand wheelbase? And that is where their adapter kits 
come in handy. So let me uncoil this cable quickly here. And you can see what we've got here is a adapter hub connected to Fnatic's M4 GT3 wheels. So this is a wheel that, as you guys know, is the actual wheel that you'd find in the real life race car. And therefore is quite a popular wheel that a lot of people are interested in, but don't necessarily own Fnatic bases. So it's really cool to have a high quality solution like this that allows you to use this uh, real life racing car wheel with any wheelbase that you want. And I've actually been running this extensively on my Simicube 2 Ultimate, for example. So what we have here is really clever. This is an emulator that actually emulates a Fnatic base. So when you plug the wheel into the PC, it actually thinks that there's a Fnatic base attached to the PC, and that allows you to use all the functions on your steering wheel exactly the same way as you would if you were plugged in normally through a Fnatic wheelbase. So that gives you a basic rundown on the types of different products that they sell. Again, jump on their website and have a look through what might suit your particular needs. This is only a small selection of, uh, you know, representative of the basic ideas of the products that they sell. But jump on, take a look for yourself. So what I want to do now is dive in a little bit deeper, show you how we install some of these Fnatic adapters, and then we'll wrap things up with some conclusions. Okay, so let's take a more detailed look now at the SRM emulator for Fnatic wheelbase as it's labeled on their website. So there's a couple of different options here in terms of configuration. You can buy this guy on its own as it looks here, or you can order it with the uh, quick release of your choice pre-installed, and that includes the QR2 as well. So I just wanna quickly run you through uh, the installation process here. Very, very simple. Uh, just a couple of little things that you do need to be aware of. So if you're looking at a simplified QR1, you might be aware that there's a little stem on here, a little peg that activates a switch on the genuine Fnatic wheels to tell it that it's a simplified version. So it disables the high torque mode on the DD1, DD2. The adapter from SRM, as you can see here, doesn't actually have provision for that little pin. So you will need to, if you're installing your own, just cut that off or shave it off. You can see here, they've shaved that off with, uh, you know, something like a Dremel or something like that. It looks like very clean and tidily done. Uh, in the case of the QR1 uh, Club Sport version, no issue, there's no peg there. But similarly, if you are planning on installing a uh, QR2 Lite, then you will need to shave off that peg, obviously with the Pro and the standard version, not an issue once again. So what you'll have inside the box is the adapter like this. Let's just have a quick look at that as well. As you can see, very nice anodized aluminium construction throughout. Nice thick cables as well, which is something that I appreciate. Nice and flexible cables too. So no shortcuts taken there. Uh, very, very solid, no flimsiness. You can see they put a coating over the electronics as well to protect those. And even just down to the design of the PCB, you can see it's all printed with SRM on there. These aren't you know generic emulators that they're ordering off Alibaba or anything like that. This is all stuff that he designs and has manufactured uh, for himself. So he doesn't obviously print and, uh, and populate the circuit boards himself in house, but all the soldering uh, in terms of connecting it to wiring and you know, all that stuff is all done in house as far as I'm aware, but all really nice high quality stuff, no issues with flex or anything like that. So let's drop that down here. So if you're installing a uh, QR1 based system, no need to do anything with the pin assembly or anything like that. You simply just cut off the little peg, drop it on, bolt it in position with the bolts that'll be provided and uh, you are good to go. Likewise with the QR1 standard or club sport edition, uh, make sure you have it oriented the right way. Of course, you can see one face is a little bit shorter than the other, so that matches up perfectly with what we have here. And again, just drop it on, absolutely fine. No issues at all to speak of, bolts in, and everything is good to go. Exactly the same as it would be on a standard Fnatic wheel. Now with the QR2, if you watched our review video on that, again, you'll be aware that they include this little plastic spacer, which replaces the metal washer sitting on top of the pin assembly here. And that just gives the pin assembly a little bit more protection. So you will want to replace that. Again, you will need to cut off the peg if you've got the light version. Otherwise, it's as simple as just installing that dropping this guy on, bolting it all into position, and you'll be good to go. So I'll quickly do that. Now we'll get it installed up with the uh, with the standard version of the QR2, so we can do some testing, and uh, then we'll jump in and take a look at the wheel conversion kit. And there you go. We now have a fully operational QR2 to any wheel you want adapter. Okay, so now let's take a more detailed look at their conversion kit 6X as it's marked on their website. Now this conversion kit is pretty cool because it doesn't involve having to open up the entire wheel to adapt this. All you're having to do is take off the quick release, make a couple of little adjustments depending on what wheel you have. We'll take you through that in just a second and you're good to go. So it's literally just like a hub stem thing like this. Again, all CNC machine aluminum. You can see there's a nice strain relief there for the USB cable, which is a nice high quality coiled thick cable as well, which you would expect 
for a wheel which is going to be connected directly through to your PC or to a hub on your sim rig. Remembering again that this is something that's going to rotate around with the wheel. So we obviously want to have something nice and high quality. Inside the kit as well, you'll find a little PCB. This is the guy that we talked about before that uh, basically just emulates the uh, wheelbase. So that is going to slot over the top of that guy. If I can line it up again, there we go. So that is there. They include the bolts that you're going to need and uh, that is pretty much it. All very nicely packaged as well, I might just add. Now for this particular wheel, the BMW M4 GT3 wheel, this actually came pre-installed with a little plastic shim for the QR2s in preparation for those. So you will need to remove that. Either way, you are going to need to remove the factory bolts out of this stem because they are going to be replaced with the longer bolts which will affix the quick release through to the back of it. So remove this, remove the bolts, set those aside somewhere nice and safe in case you ever want to revert back. And then all we're going to be doing is sliding this guy over the pin assembly, obviously being very careful that we don't crush any of the pins. So it's literally just going to slide on. If you have to put excessive force into this, you're doing it wrong. So just going to line it up. And I will add as well that if you're not confident in doing this yourself, not that it's difficult or anything, but if you're not confident in doing it, uh, they do actually sell a selection of wheels with these guys pre-installed. So that is an option for you as well. Again, just check their website for all the details on that. So you can see that is now slotted on over the pins. We're now going to drop in our long screws. Again, just be very careful that nothing is cross-threading. If you're having to use excessive force, then again, you're doing it wrong. So these are just gonna slot in. Now you may have a little bit of trouble aligning it just because there's a few different moving parts here that all need to be lined up correctly. So that wasn't too much of a problem for me though, probably because I've done it before. Let me go in, I'm just gonna wind these guys down as far as you can get them. You can see that one's just a little bit more resistant than the others were, but it is still screwing in without uh, cross-threading at all. We're then gonna grab an Allen key and we're just gonna wind those down all the way to the bottom, not excessive force on these. We're just gonna do them up so that they're biting, but not, uh, not under any tension, not under any excessive tension, I should say. And the process here is exactly the same for any other Fnatic wheel that you might be installing it on. Just remembering again, the little plastic piece, if you have a wheel that that is pre-installed on and a lot of wheels now moving forward, depending on when they were, uh, when they were manufactured, the batches will come with these pre-installed. So just be aware of that. So we're just gonna crank those down a little bit more just to make sure it's nice and tight, but not too tight. There we go, that is not going to go anywhere. That's always the important thing. You gotta slap it and then say it's not going anywhere and then it'll be fine. <laughs> and then uh, we slot this guy on over the top. Strain relief is nice and loose there. So again, making sure that we line this up correctly. There is a long side and a short side. So slot it on like so. You can see that's now sitting over the entire assembly. And we then just drop our original factory bolts back in for securing to the back of the wheel. I like to finger tighten these as far as I possibly can, just because it saves having to get an Allen key on an awkward angle and try to tighten them. So wind them down as far as you can. Again, not excessively tight here, again, depending on the wheel. Uh, will depend on how much uh, tightness you want to put in. Some plastic wheels, you probably want to go a little bit less, even though they do have uh, metal threaded inserts, you're not going to want to crank them super, super tight because you might strip out those inserts. But you don't need to go crazy here. Obviously, if it's moving at all, then it's too loose, but that is as simple as that. And then if we spin the wheel around, you can see the little micro USB connection internally there. You might not be able to see it on camera, but it is there. We're just going to orient our USB cable correctly, plug that guy in. Like so, it's gonna be a little tricky for you guys to see on camera there, but it does go in relatively easily. There we go, that's clicked in. And then we just wanna tighten down the bolts on this strain relief just to make sure that that cable is not gonna get snagged and uh, tear the little connection off the PCB. Would be nice if they used a USB-C connection. I'm sure a lot of people will be wondering about that, but uh, it is what it is. Once it's secure, I don't think it's likely to be a problem. So that is nice and tight now. That cable is not going anywhere because I slapped it and uh, yeah, there you go. That is a Fnatic wheel converted across to USB. Simple as that. It's a little, maybe a little bit daunting for some people if you've never done anything like that before, but really there's nothing difficult there. Nothing to be afraid of. Not really any risk of damaging anything, I would say, if you're careful. And uh, there you go. We've got a nice, clean, 
70 millimeter stud pattern on the back here. Now, one thing just to be aware of here, they've gotten this as slim as they possibly can. Obviously, they need to account for the length of the pin assembly that you guys saw when we had everything apart, but it does add a little bit of thickness. So this spacer here from the face of the wheel to the face of where you're gonna mount your quick release is 60 millimeters thick. If you were to compare that to a Fnatic standard quick release, you can see it's about the same length, maybe a little bit shorter, but then of course, whatever quick release you're gonna be using is gonna be added on top of that. So it is gonna push your wheel back a little bit further than uh, would otherwise be the case. There are some other versions of their conversion kits available, which uh, basically remove that entire pin assembly and can get things a lot slimmer. So if that is something that's particularly important for you, again, just check their website to uh, check out some of the other options that they might have. A little bit more involved on the install side, but do move the wheel a little bit closer to the base if that's something that you need. And uh, yeah, it's as simple as that. We now have a fully USB converted and ready to go Fnatic wheel. So we're up and running now on our test rig. Gonna show you how the SRM emulator for Fanatec bases works with an aftermarket steering wheel. Now, the first thing I wanna show you quickly here from a mechanical perspective is the complete lack of flex whatsoever. I intentionally chose a really solid wheel here in the Solpec wheel just to demonstrate this. So you'll see there's a little bit of flex in the wheel deck itself, nothing in the QR2 as you guys saw in our QR2 review recently, but more importantly for this video, you can see as I'm pulling and prodding on that wheel, pulling up and down, twisting left and right, doing all the things that you wouldn't really be doing when you're driving anyway. Absolutely no discernible flex. You guys can see better on camera than I can from my position here, but I can tell you I'm not discerning any movement at all in the hub itself, nothing in the QR, and everything is absolutely fine. So let's jump in now and talk about the software side of things. So if you go into the software, it's just gonna show up normally, uh, show that the wheelbase is detected here. One thing you might be wondering is because we don't have access to the tuning menu here, uh, how do we actually enable high torque mode? So we've got the torque key installed. What we're gonna do is you get the low torque prompt here. If you hold the steering wheel 90 degrees in either direction, you'll see a little bar comes across the bottom. That is the same as pressing the okay button. So in lieu of having any physical buttons, that is the way we do it. Same with any of their other wheels, that's actually implemented at Fanatex level for the Podium Hub, I believe. Uh, so it's not something that's integrated through their own firmware on their emulator circuit there. Then if we click over onto the steering wheel, you'll see as far as the Fanatec software is concerned, it thinks that there's a Club Sport Formula wheel connected and that is what is actually enabling the force feedback. So for all other intents and purposes, everything just works, everything is up and running and there's absolutely no issues there. Now we're running a uh, Solpec wheel here, which we're gonna be reviewing very shortly. It gives you an idea of the extra distance that you get there compared to some of the other wheels. Obviously every wheel is gonna be a little bit different. Some have bigger spaces than others do, but let me just pop this wheel off quickly for you and I'm gonna pop on a standard Fanatec McLaren GT3 wheel with the same QR2, just to give you an idea of the difference there. So you can see, if we line that up so that the QRs are pretty close, it's probably about maybe an inch and a half, two inches difference there, but again, it will vary depending on the wheel, but I just wanted to give you that visual representation there. So we'll pop that wheel back off again. You can see straight away, it's just detected this as the normal uh, GT3 wheel. It has actually prompted me to do a firmware update as well. So that is how they've integrated that through the software, we'll pop this guy back on again. And you can see the wheel itself is just connected via USB. So we're just running that through uh, through SimHub. Obviously that's a topic for another video when we get into the review of this wheel. But yeah, that is how it works to run any wheel you want through your Fanatec base with the emulator so that it shows up in the Fanatec software as a Club Sport Formula wheel. And it all works exactly the same way through Fanlab as well. So it just shows up as a Club Sport Formula wheel and you have access to all the normal settings for your wheelbase. That is that. So let's jump over onto the daily driver rig now, which is running a SimiCube 2 Ultimate currently, and we'll show you how to run a Fanatec wheel on a different wheelbase. Okay, so over on the daily driver rig now with the M4 GT3 wheel from Fnatic connected via our Zero Play quick release to our SimiCube 2 Ultimate base. So not something that you would normally see, but made possible by the SRM adapter. So. First thing I wanna point out here, obviously you can see there is quite a large extension here. The wheel is quite a lot closer to me than it would be with a wheel connected directly to the uh, piece here. So normally you would imagine the wheel would be bolted to this bit. That's kind of what I was talking about before with the 60 millimeter extension that we have here. Remembering again that if you do wanna have something a little bit slimmer, there are other options available. They just have the disadvantage of having to pull the wheel completely apart to uh, remove pins and do all that stuff. So again, check out those other options if that's something that bothers you. In terms of flex, again, absolutely nothing 
to speak of whatsoever that I can discern at least. Anyway, there's a little, tiny little bit of flex in the wheel deck as we had before, but certainly nothing at all in the extension itself. We wouldn't expect to see anything like that. So that is all absolutely fine. On the software side of things, let's have a look at that now. So you'll notice straight away, uh, we have the base detected as a CSL Elite wheelbase uh, PS4 version. Now, again, we do have to note here that this isn't gonna be a PlayStation compatible solution simply because a PlayStation can only detect one particular USB input. And obviously you're gonna have to plug the wheel in separately from whatever base you're wanting to run. So not gonna work in that regard. Whether or not it'll work with various different aftermarket adapters, emulators, things like that, I don't know. Uh, you can do your own research there, but this is advertised as a PC only product. So detected as a CSL Elite wheelbase, obviously none of these settings here are gonna do anything because it's not the wheelbase that we're actually running. This is just a means for the Fanatec software to detect the wheel and do all the things that you need to do there. Now, likewise, this does also work with Fanalab as you can see alongside here. So let's click on the steering wheel now and you can see it's just detected exactly the same way it would be inside the game with the exception that the steering angle input there isn't working. So all the settings here work exactly the same way as they do if you were connected via a uh, normal more Fanatec base. Uh, one issue that I did have, which doesn't appear to be an issue now since I've updated the drivers for the Fanatec software is I did have a couple of little glitches with the clutch bite point not working properly and always going to 100%. But you can see now here that is all working perfectly normally. You can see I release one hand, it goes to the adjustment point and then it continues down. I can make all those adjustments through the tuning menu in the Fanalab software as well. So there's no issues at all there. Uh, steering sensitivity obviously has no impact, but then all these other settings for multi-position switches, analog clutch settings, and all those things all work perfectly normally. Even just the button LED test, you can see works there. OLED display is all functioning as well. Now, with regards to the OLED display, obviously one of the normal big advantages of the Fnatic ecosystem is the ability to make adjustments to your force feedback settings via the tuning menu on the steering wheel itself. Now, it goes without saying that I'm gonna say it anyway that we're not gonna be able to make adjustments to our wheelbase from a different company via the tuning menu here, but we do still have access to a limited subset of features here through the tuning menu. So we still can go through presets here and anything that we've adjusted uh, with relation to the settings on the wheel itself, we can still adjust here. So if I scroll through quickly, you can see we've got adjustments for our multi-position switches as well as our clutch bite point modes and whatnot. So we can scroll through here with the BMW button in the middle, clutch bite point for our analog paddles, clutch and handbrake, brake and throttle, mappable analog axes, and so forth. So it kind of just makes sense. It's not giving you a whole bunch of settings which don't do anything, which I think is actually pretty darn cool. I was expecting that it might do that. But yeah, for all intents and purposes, it works exactly the way you would want it to work and everything is all happy and functional. So there you have it guys, that's a quick rundown on just some of the products that are sold by Sim Racing Machine. So hopefully if you've got a specific issue, there is an adapter here that might help solve that issue. Really hope that today's video has helped you out. As I said before, we don't have any affiliate links or any sort of uh, connection with SRM at all, but I just, I, I really like companies that are offering solutions to problems. And uh, you know, as you can see, the quality of this stuff is really high as well. So absolutely no reason at all not to recommend it if it's gonna suit your particular need. So it's simple as that guys. Leave a thumbs up if you've enjoyed the video. Consider subscribing to the channel as well if you aren't already so you don't miss out on future videos like this one. Only about 30% of the people that are watching these videos are subscribed to the channel. And I know it doesn't make a big difference in terms of what you guys see in your newsfeed these days, but it does make a big difference in terms of telling YouTube that the content is valuable so it shows it to other sim racers like you guys so that we can help out as many people as we possibly can. So we really do appreciate your support there. It's a small thing you can do that really does go a long way. And it's as simple as that, guys. Check out boostermedia.net for a bunch more review videos and information. Uh, discounts there available too on certain sim racing products are so definitely worth checking out, but that is it. I'll see you guys again very soon. Bye.